everybody. It's Friday again, and we're so glad to be with you because I have a special project that I'd like to share. It is a project that we will be doing at the May Workshop here in Columbia, Ohio, which is going to happen real soon. We try to have a workshop every year, usually in the middle of May. And this year, it's been book solid for about two months. Amazing. One of our teachers is going to be Christy Friesen, who as you know, is my friend, and she is the Princess of Palmer Clay, in my humble opinion. And she's going to be assisted by Katie Oskin, who is another Princess of Palmer Clay. So we've got two heavy hitters there to help us for two days of Palmer Clay. And then, the last day, I will be teaching my project, which is assemblage. And I think, well, haven't we done enough? assemblage videos but apparently not <laughs> everybody likes them they don't get tired of them i have a project that i developed some time ago that came out really nice and i've reprised it many many times i think i developed it oh the first one i did maybe 1998 so those pieces are long long gone but there's so many ways you can go with it so i'm going to show you how to set the form up and then some possibilities for you to make your own design however which way you want to go with it. It's really pretty simple, very relaxing, very fun to do. So, without further ado, come on over here and I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, so this is the project basically. <coughs> Excuse me, it's the focal anyway. I haven't gotten around to beating up the back yet, but we've done that a lot on other videos, so you know how that goes. But basically, it consists of five of these filigree. And they are kind of, um, uh, they have an arts and crafts feeling about them. They've been made in the industry for many, many years. There are vintage examples of those that you can find if you like vintage jewelry and you like to go out and poke around to find it. You may find one. But this one is uh, made from... Uh, tooling was developed in the 50s and we have carried this piece as long as there has been a Bisa Boutique selling bits and pieces online which is since 1997 don't know if you knew that so this is in May it's 21 years this yeah this is our this is our month yeah it's 21 years this month so anyway this is the piece that we use and I did not bring down the numbers to say them here but I will get them for Javi for when she's rendering the video and she can insert them for you but basically for this project if you want to make the five piece collar because it is a collar necklace then you would need five of those and you would need five backers these are blanks they're very inexpensive you can use this shape which I prefer because it's the shape of the filigree or you can use uh, an oval one. An oval one works real good too. A round one, it depends. You'd have to use a small one because it's got to fit. Just to give you, show you a little bit. It's got to fit inside the filigree, and the filigree is dapped. Do you know what dapped means? Dapped means that when they make the piece, at first it's flat, and then they strike it again and it bumps it up in the middle and really for a lot of our projects that's a good thing if it's dapped because that way you have a little bit more room it's not flat to the back you have a little bit more play especially if you're caging you want dapped pieces anyway this is a dapped piece and you could say well why do you glue that in the middle Brenda and it's very simple it's because if I don't since we're making this project with glue it's going to show all this blobs of glue going to be oozing out the back. So if you put the plate down and you try to do the majority of your gluing to the middle of the piece, then you have a nice finish to it and doesn't show. Now I used raw brass on this, which is fine. Um, these pieces are brass ox. But we have gobs of them in raw brass, which is kind of cool because that way you can do shabby white on it, you can paint them colors, you can do patina, you can torch them, you can totally make them your way in raw brass. So that's a good way to go, but we do have them in brass socks too, and that's what I did today with this. 
but the blanks are raw and it's okay. If you want to make them match the raw brass a little bit, the brass ox a little bit better, you can simply take and run your torch over them and then it'll get a little patina. You'll need to seal it if you do that. Okay. Um, on these, not a bad idea to seal these either, but you would need to buff them up and clean them, make sure they're completely free of glue residue of any kind, shined up nice, and if you intend to sign your work, you should sign it before you seal it. So I would probably, on this one that's done here, let me flip it over and show you. Uh, see, I've got a little bit of cleanup to do here, right here. There's some here that needs to come off. But it's fairly neat. You don't see much glue popping in and out. I would sign my signature B. Sue right here. So yeah, I'll probably sign them. You'll say, well, yeah, Brenda, but you got the whole thing already you know, assemble, you've got your doofus already, on. it's okay, don't worry about it. I can, I have a light touch, I can do this anyway. If you don't, sign your blank plate first. I use a Dremel freehand, there is a video on that. Um, and then I'll just misting coats, it won't hurt a thing, we're good. So, you can do it afterward, not a problem. And for those who are taking the class, um, they will be using raw brass blanks. And we're not going to be able to spray paint them or anything like that because we're in a large class. There's nowhere to do it. Um, but they could bring your markers if they like. But just remember, if you spray paint something like this, it's raw brass, um, or you use any other kind of paints on it, then before you would apply the blank to it, you probably want to scuff it up a little bit to give it some tooth. And remember, if you're going to spray paint or colorize raw brass, both sides. Because it won't take to the back. You know, you're going to have to spray both sides. And then, if you're going to do assemblage over the front of it, um, which of course, yes, you will be, then you might need to scuff it up a little again, again. Because what can happen is if you get your paint on a little bit too thick, it acts as a resist for the glue and in effect you end up gluing to paint rather than brass which is not what you want to do and it can mean you can get a starved bond or a bad bond so we don't want that we don't want stuff falling off of our stuff so I find if you scuff it up just a little bit if you've painted it you'd be far better off you might be okay but hey why take a chance right so, I know a lot of you want to sell your work, and if you want to sell your work, you want it to be excellent. So anyway, all I did then was I took, I put my little sections together. You can do them singly, by the way. If you would prefer to do them separately and then put them together, hey, <laughs> go for it. I always put them together first. So, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to tell you a few little tips about what I've got here that I'm going to do it with. Okay, so let me just move this up out of the way for a minute. Now, these have their backs on them. I did them last night. Now, you probably want to know, Brenda Sue, what is this blurb on the front? Well, now, are you going to glue it to the back so that you cover the blurb on the back? You might get some coming up to the front, but that's okay because you're going to do your assemblage or your motif over top of it so it really doesn't matter. But I made one big mistake on this one and this one. It came off. What I did, I was upstairs in my office and I have a little table up there that I use to make jewelry so I can watch my big screen TV. <laughs> and I glued things on. Now if you're going to glue it, when you put this on, you have to set it on something and leave it upside down. You don't want to take and just go like that with the glue because it could just fall right off and it's not going to glue to it. So this way, the force of gravity makes it stay. Okay, so I had them upside down on a Ziploc, but it was one of those Ziplocs like we use to send your stuff that has the white block on it. And so when I peeled them off this morning, I had white stuff from the Ziploc. So the moral of the story is... If you're going to do that and use a Ziploc for your little surface to glue onto to let it set up, that's fine. But don't use a white block Ziploc because then you can expect that. Not that it really, really matters, but it would be better if you did. Okay, so now what I do to hook this all up. 
Of course, I got my Wolf brand out. I like to use an 8 millimeter jump. You say, well, Brenda, don't you think that's a little bit big for the purpose? And I would say, yeah, a little bit. However, sixes just don't quite get it. So about the only other thing that maybe you could do would be to go ahead and make custom jumps and make them a little bit smaller. But, eh. This works fine for me, and I don't mind that they stand up a little bit high. It's You don't really notice it so much when something is assembled. Now, when I do this, I double jump. And the reason is because with assemblage, it can get a little heavy sometimes. Now, that one that I just made is not a bit heavy. It's very lightweight. So I'll actually be able to wear it because... Well, I, you might have noticed in the beginning I'm wearing a rather heavy-looking necklace. And I won't probably have it on long. I, I love this necklace, but I probably won't have it on long because it's, it's heavy. I like things light around my neck. Some people don't mind, but um, I have, a, I have a fibromyalgia and I have a little bit of neuropathy from being diabetic. So uh, stuff that's heavy doesn't work too good for me around the neck. As much as I love big honking pieces. So I go ahead and I double jump ring just in case. Okay. So you see I do it. No big deal. So what else can I tell you about this while I'm going for it? Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't need to double jump ring the whole thing. Well, yeah, because I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the front. I'm not going to finish this one entirely, though. I'm going to leave some things to your imagination because I don't want to leave this video go too long. And I also want you to think outside the box and just make your own creation. Now, I'm going to tell you one more thing that is very, very cool about this design. You can do a single link if you want. If you want a smaller necklace, like just this part, and then maybe you could drill that right there. Here, let me get it up. You could drill it right here, which it's got a really nice guide for that. It'd be real easy to ding that with your center punch or an old nail, and then to drill right through that. So you could hang a tassel here, and that would be neat and just do one and then some simple beads. I mean, you can make a very, very simple mini assemblage type necklace that way, which would be fine. And honestly, if you're thinking about selling your work now, here's a thought. If you do that and you used only one of the triangle filigree, why then you might make a whole lot of money for the use of them. Because if you made a necklace like the one I suggested, it would probably sell for $35 to $45. But when you make this whole necklace like this, let me move it back in the frame here. What do you think I'm going to get for this once the back is beaded up and it's all finished off and I've done all my thing? And also I'm going to set little stones in here too in these little flowers. What do you think I'll get for that? Well. 75, 80 maybe. I've sold ones like this and I've gotten up to 95 for them. Um, but you know what? If I had made five different necklaces using just the centerpiece, how much more money would that have been? Let's just say it's 40 bucks we sell them for. That's $200. So that's twice as much. Is it twice as much work? Maybe it is more work because you're going to have to make, you know, you're going to have to string them all up and all that. You know, use chain or whatever. But it's just a thought. These are one of the truths that we learn in the build -a line class is how to get a little bit more out of your design because we all want to be artists and we all want to be fancy and, and, and take our art to the next level and go over the top and all that kind of stuff and that's wonderful however we also need to make some money out if we want to keep going many of us have the dream of being self-supporting well you need to think about these things maybe you could do one like this for a showstopper or a case piece as they say or yeah, I would do that. I would do one as a show, showstopper, and then I'd do a whole bunch of singles. And then I'm hang, you know, 
on a necklace display and they could choose. And they could have that one, which will get catch their attention and bring them to you, especially if you're doing shows. But in the long run, I bet you they'll buy the singles. Think about it. Think about it. One of the things that I learned from working with Mel Bernie is how to be more economical in the use of my stuff. You still make a wonderful piece, but you don't have to go crazy with it. Just a thought. And Mel, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> he does sometimes. Okay, so what am I going to do with this? Well, you know, the sky's the limit. I can make it very steampunk with lots of watch parts, keys, found items. Now, the one thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to get too much heavy chotch on here. The very first one of these that I ever made, I have to post a picture on Facebook. I have shown it many times. I call it the Let Them Eat Cake necklace. Kenneth J. Lane had Let, me, let Them Eat Cake. This jewelry. <laughs> Kenneth J. Lane, famous designer. Anyway, um, my Let Them Eat Cake was full, chock full of ceramic roses, bits and pieces of rhinestone, leaves, cold paint, vintage unit. It was so huge. It was so heavy. But the thing is, with these dapped filigree, you have to place stuff right. And you got to kind of maybe keep it a little bit flat. You can see this collage doesn't have a ton of dimension up and down and there's a reason for that you've got to make it fit with your filigree or it could just pop off the first one the let them eat cake necklace that I made the first one that I made like this was for mother the bride for a big big fancy wedding and she, she had the earrings were one of those too it was that time when people wore that big stuff um, and I have to wonder if she made it through the whole night wearing that. I know she loved it, and it was beautiful, and I enjoy showing it still, but... And I have to wonder what fell off of it, because it, some pieces are made to accommodate heavy, and others aren't. So you want to keep that in mind. So, for me, I'm thinking maybe what I'd do with this one, and I do need to finish it, because I want to bring it to the class, too. I have these lovely little heart cabochons. They're vintage. Years ago, when I had my line, we used this very piece in my line a lot. And now, it's not really easy to find them. And when you do, they sure cost a whole lot more than they did back then. But this might be a pretty look. I'm not gluing them down right now because I'm still deciding. You know, that's another good thing you can do. You can get your stuff out, move it all around, and decide. You don't have to start just gluing away and, it, you know, whatever happens, happens. Because then again, if you want to sell your art, you want it not to just happen. You want to have a little bit of a plan. A little bit of just happening, happy accidents and discoveries is, is good. That's how you grow. But you want to sell it. You want to be something that people want to buy. You can't just do whatever you want to do. You have to make it, if you want to sell it. If you don't care about selling it, then fine. Have at it, do whatever you like. But if you want to sell it, you're going to have to make somebody happy. Right? So what I have in mind to do, I want to be very playful with these. I like this piece. Where's one that's not bent yet? I use it in this one, too. It's this one, this piece here. We have these at the site. We have them in classic gold and some of the other colors too. It's really cool because you can cut it up and do stuff. But on this, I kind of want to keep it all together. That's what I did on all these and then I just glued over the hole. So um, I, I just kind of want to go playful with it. I may have to play with this yet a little bit. Let me just show you how this goes. And then I'll give you a couple more little design tricks. First of all, I take it and I bend it right here. Do, I do a lot of manipulating of brass. I, I like to give it dimension, always have. Learned that from looking at vintage jewelry. You look at the old West German vintage jewelry, it was a lot of filigree that was manipulated. Now here's another thing about this piece. These are going to stick out just a little bit, which could catch on something, which could mean that they would come off the piece. Not good. 
or they could snag somebody's blouse or sweater that's wearing it. Not good. People take exception to that, and they will tell you. I bought this necklace from you, and I love it, but you know what? It ruined my blouse, and my blouse cost X amount. I've never had anybody ask me to pay for their blouse, but I have gotten told about it. And I, you know, I just don't think that that's being responsible as an artist to create things that stick up and poke people or can grab on something or scratch somebody. You know, insofar as you can avoid that, then you want to do that. So I'm bending them down. Okay. So then what will I do with this? Well, hmm. I'm thinking maybe, maybe I want to make my hearts kind of roll across the collage, make them play a little bit. That's pretty. So maybe I'll see if I can get, now I'm going to have to do some work on this. After we're off camera, then that's when I'll do it. But just to give you an idea, I might let them play across. Where's another one? Here we go. I'll do it one more time. Make them play across there. And that'll be fun. And then what will I fill in with? Well, um, tiny pearls are nice. Would I put a ceramic flower? I don't know. If I did, I'd go with a little one. These are glued to something, but let me just give you an idea. That might be pretty in there. To be honest with you, that's my look for my line. Pearl, pink, and brass. That's what I did. All those years ago. I still tend to want to go that way sometimes. And you know it's crazy because, well the brass color, the, the yellow of the brass is a color that's good for me. Being I have what they call so-called redheads complexion. Um, but for me, it would be warm beige pearl that will look the best, and pink. I love pink, but there, that color of pink is not my pink. For me, it's hot pink that looks the best. But yeah, sometimes you wear something just because you love it. Who, who cares? Who the hey cares? So see, now with that one, the way that's just naturally resting, I would want to move that over because this is going to stick out here. That's not going to scratch anybody, but if I leave it like that, I'm going to have to be careful that it doesn't pick up. So I got to see some over here I need to bend down a little bit more too on that piece before I finish it. So that gives you an idea of what I might do. And then I have, um, I have these little leaves here. You know, maybe I take and push some of them around in there. Oh, now that's looking like beef soup. But I don't want to leave that hang off there too much because then again you've got something that's sticking out too much and it is not, it's just not going to be a good design. Okay? This needs to be tight and close in. A great big leaf hanging down off of that is going to look like a fish out of water. So, you know, something like this, I would want to put it more like a crescent style, maybe maybe baby so that's my thought on that but just to give you an idea how this looks like it's going to go and then um, at the end of it I'll probably do some little pearls or some little crystals and use my pick-me-up tool I love that thing you guys got one yet what's your hurry if you didn't <laughs> what's your hurry go get it we have plenty at the site they work like the bomb I I don't know why in the world did I use needle nose tweezers all those years because it slowed me down so bad when the pick me up works fantastic to get so in fact I was even using like little watch parts like these on this piece today and um, just to show you what I did these pieces this here this here this one this one, you know how those got on there? Pick me up tool. Picked them right up with a pick me up tool and put them on there. Ah, it comes in handy. You need to get one. We have them at the site, but if we're out, I don't care. Just get one. You need it. It's important. Anyway, 
this gives you pretty much idea of where I'm going to go with this. So, if you are coming to the May Workshop, this gives you an idea of where you might want to go with yours. And I can't wait. We've got over 40 people in the class doing this project. Christy is staying over an extra day, and so is Katie. They're going to be in my class. And Christy is an assemblage artist, too. So it will be very, very interesting to see where she goes. I bet you anything she uses polymer play parts. Oh, yeah, I bet she does. And I bet she will attach them with serum on, which, dang it, I forgot. I was going to bring that downstairs. I did the cutest thing with serum on the other day. The pictures are on Facebook. And they're on Instagram, too. We got red serolone. It is Chinese red. It's a freaking red. It's so beautiful. And we put the little monkey in an oblong um, uh, bezel. I lost my mind for a minute. It happens. And we had him, like, hanging underneath this tree thing. And he's and it's, the, it's the monkey from uh, the BC 1928 line. And one of our bristles is just this awesome, bodacious, audacious red. And it looks so good with rusted iron. You guys got to come over and have a look. So, and how did I talk about it? I don't know. I just went off on red serum. ADHD on wheels. I'm telling you what. I had a point, but it escapes me now. Anyway, you do still need to come look at it. And maybe get some before we run out. Okay. Um... Oh, I know what I was going to say. I bet you, Christy, if she does polymer clay and she does an assemblage on this, she will be attaching it with serolin. Did you know serolin can act like glue? It does. It's awesome. And you know, I learned that from her. But I don't often use it that way yet, but I will. Okay, enough of that. So we'll see that over there. Javi just told me that while we're at the class, she's going to do at least two Facebook Lives. So you can get to see some of the project and how it goes there. And also, she's going to do little quick snips and bits. Talking to different people, seeing their project over the three days. And then she's going to take that, maybe the next video we do after the class, she's going to take that and put it together like a scrapbook type video so that you guys can really get the feeling of what it's like to come to a Bisu workshop. I don't want to brag, but let me tell you, this is what I'm told. It's a life changer. It's a game changer. And I believe perhaps that's true because I've gone to other people's workshops and that was the feeling that I got there. But at ours, you make friends for life. I kid you not. You do. Especially when we're doing a project and we're knee-deep in it with a teacher that's so good as Christy Friesen. So, we're, we're going to share it with you. you know, even though you couldn't be there, you're going to get to see. So, that's all great, too. All right, I've yacked on enough. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish these. And when I do, I'm going to take pictures. And they're going to go on Instagram. And they're going to go on Facebook. And I hope that you get to tune in. And by the way, have you joined us at the Bisa Boutique's Creative Group yet? Because if you haven't, we would love it if you did. It's a great place to be. It's our haven of peace away from all the crap that's happening in the world. We don't talk about it there. Nobody's sick there because we don't talk about being sick. And a lot of us are. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about what's going on out there. It's our place to escape. It's our place to be nurtured. It's our place to support one another. And this is a fantastic group of people. You will enjoy being there. So come. It's free. And I usually show up once or twice a day, too. So I'll be there. Come on over. See you next time. Have a great day. Love you. Bye.